It is true that if, in fact, diplomacy fails, what I've asked my team to do is to look at all options. What other means can we put in place uh, to change Mr. Putin's calculus? Uh, and the possibility of lethal defensive weapons is one of those options that's being examined. But I have not made a decision about that yet. Of course he hasn't made a decision about it. Uh, when has he ever made a decision? Uh, joining us now is uh, Robert McFarland, former National Security Advisor to President Ronald Reagan and architect of the SDI Strategic Defense Initiative. And uh, Mr. McFarland, great to talk to you again, sir. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. All right. So um, the president met with, uh, with uh, Merkel and came out. And after a lot of speculation and talk that maybe we would be sending additional arms to uh, Ukraine, it appears that's not going to be the case, at least not now. Well, it's been a pretty um, sorry performance from the beginning since uh, Crimea and back a year ago when the Russians invaded However, it's clear that it is going to be a long-term process to overcome essentially 20 years of allowing NATO to decline and any sense of a deterrent to Russian aggression. And that decline of NATO has resulted in this invasion of a sovereign friend in Ukraine, the takeover of part of their sovereign territory, in order to get it back to where it was before this began, it's going to take several measures. We're going to have to get our NATO allies to ramp up their defense budgets over a five-year period. My number would be 5%, beginning to show evidence that we are going to, re to deter any future effort at invading a foreign country by holding our own exercises, doing what we used to do in the 80s to deploy American divisions to Europe to demonstrate to our allies and to the Russians that we will be there if the balloon goes up, to build quick reaction forces that can respond immediately in 48 hours to a, an invasion such as has happened. Well, that's beginning to happen. In a strategic sense, also, we ought to look at why is it that Ukraine is so vulnerable? Well, there are a lot of reasons, but one of them is they rely on Russian gas, and Russian can turn it off at will. However, Ukraine has a huge amount of gas that ought to be developed. So we could relieve that strategic vulnerability by organizing a public-private partnership to begin to develop the coal bed methane, natural gas, that exists in 400 trillion cubic feet in Ukraine. But we ought to begin doing all of these things. But thus far, there's been no will really on the part of the United States, either there or in Syria or against ISIS, to do what is required to deter outright aggression. Well, I, I got to tell you, sir, you, you are describing what the United States uh, most probably would have done in a pre-Obama uh, situation. But as you, as you know just you know, better than I, uh, and you say the will doesn't exist, I don't think there's an interest, I don't think there's a will, I don't think he really cares. Well, there are responsibilities that endure in both parties of our country, Democrats and Republicans acknowledge that it's in our interest to work with allies to avoid aggression really anywhere in the world, because when you allow that to happen, the aggressor will keep doing it. And whether it's in the Middle East, the Far East, or in Europe, we have to maintain a deterrent worthy of a name. And that means not only uh, military force, but economic measures, as well as political cohesion, and the conduct of visible exercises that show the earnest that we're just not talking rhetorically, that we're serious about this. But all of those habits that used to be very healthy habits that enabled us to win the Cold War have been put aside uh, in the interest of a false peace dividend. We've got to go back to doing what it takes to deter aggression. 
Let, let me ask you, uh, this was a double down on today at the uh, presidential, uh, the, 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 the briefing uh, by the president's spokesman. Uh, when asked about the president's remarks and Susan Rice's remarks that uh, climate change may pose a bigger threat to the American public and our national security than terrorism. And the White House spokesman, Josh Ernest, uh, did not deny that. He stressed the importance and the, the threat that uh, climate change poses while saying that we're, we don't face the same kind of al-Qaeda-like threat, mass attack that we did on 9-11. I, I can't believe I'm hearing this from the President of the United States. Well, unfortunately, I'm afraid it just demonstrates the poverty of intellectual vision and understanding of geopolitics in setting priorities about where to put our investments, our money, our diplomacy, and so forth. It isn't to say that you totally ignore all environmental concerns, certainly not, but you can put it in balance and in proportion to what are more proximate threats to clear vital interests of the United States including deterring aggression by Russia or any other great power that threatens stability in an important part of the world. That's clearly happening all around the globe right now. And we just simply got to awaken to the importance of American leadership or if we are to maintain any hope of stability and a framework for peace in the world. Uh, Mr. McFarland, one, one quick thing. It, it, we have 30 seconds. Uh, I, I just coming in on CNN that P Putin and Obama have spoken on the phone about Ukraine. Th 30 seconds. What's the first thing you would say to Putin if you were Obama? Pull back your forces to demonstrate that you have no aggressive intent and call on the partisans inside Ukraine that you're supporting to cease fire right away. All right, sir, you, I got to tell you, you uh, know as much about uh, what's happening uh, as anybody I've spoken to. You are a uh, national treasure and people should be making uh, use of what you have to say, maybe in the next administration uh, as an advisor of some sort, but certainly not that this one would have no interest, unfortunately. Pleasure to speak to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Always a pleasure. Uh, th thank you. Robert McFarlane, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, it's the Molesburg panel. You know it, you love it, you got to have it. And we have a lot to discuss, uh, including, of course, Brian Williams. So don't forget about him. It's all next right here on Newsmax Television.